Well, hello, my name is Peyton Smith. I'll be talking about John 15, the vine and the branches, and how Jesus taught lessons out of that. <clears throat> uh, so let's just start with a quick summary. So quick summary is uh, Jesus is in Jerusalem speaking to his disciples about the word of God and how powerful it is. He uses the analogy of a gardener and a garden. He's talking about the relationship between him and his followers. Uh, and speaking to the later Christian believers and church. So the current church of the Seventh-day Adventist people, Baptists. He's speaking to the whole church in general, not just to one specific group. He just speaks about the love that a friend should have and a life that God will bring to us when we listen to him. And he basically talks a lot about the, um, the passage when it comes to how we should obey him and how we should understand what he's speaking to us. So who was Jesus teaching and what was he teaching? Well, it is very simple to explain this question. Uh, Jesus was teaching, teaching his 12 disciples and giving them words of comfort. In the first three verses, he talks to his disciples about relating to Jesus at when Jesus departs or goes off to heaven to be with God. Uh, verses 4 to 5 are him talking about the virtual relationship between the vine and the branch. So, the, yep, um, the vine being Jesus and the branches being his disciples or the people, or as we would look at it today, the later church that we are currently in. Uh, verses 6 to 8 talk about the price of not abiding and the promise to those who abide in me. Verses 9 to 11 talk about the link between love and obedience. Verses 12 to 15 um, talk about relating to each other when Jesus departs. And the ver verses 16 to 17, which is the final bit of this um, passage, is talking about the chosen to bear and to love one another. Uh, the reason this passage may be taught to prepare the disciples for his future um, from earth, sorry, um, the reason this passage may was taught um, was to prepare the disciples for his departure from earth and ascent into heaven. So after Jesus left, he went up to heaven, uh, as we know, to be with God. Um, as for the most of Jesus' life, he had been with his disciples um, from an early age on, being maybe about 20, 25 years old to about 30. So it lasted quite a bit so he's with them for most of his ministry essentially and they're with him for most of a good portion of their life so he's talking to them about how you should act when i'm gone um after most of his life jesus had been with the disciples as we said so leaving them would be a huge loss to um to the disciples uh, the metaphor of the vine and the branches was used to describe the relationship between um he, he which he had had with his disciples but also with his followers and believers of christ the reason that Jesus taught this to his disciples was to show the importance of remaining connected in him. Along with those teachings, he was all he all, he was also teaching them to continue bearing fruit and living life in blessings of the Holy Spirit. So let the Spirit fulfill you and let the Spirit flow within you to therefore gain better knowledge and stuff. There are three lessons we can take away from this message, and they are very important. The messages that we can take away are abiding in Christ, bearing fruit, and loving one another. All right, Abiding in Christ. Let's start with that one. So abiding in Christ is the central focus of John 15, along with um, loving one another, which is also a central focus in there. It's a close second or third, but abiding in Jesus in Christ is what Jesus is really talking about here. So abiding in Christ is the central focus of John 15, and the clear main message that Jesus is trying to put forward. The main, the meaning of abiding in Christ um, means allowing his word, or God's word, to fill our minds, direct our um, wills, and transform our affections. In other words, our relationship um, to Christ it's, is immediate, is intimate, in, in yeah, is intimately connected to what we do with our Bibles. Things like prayer, Bible studies, and worship are all ways we can abide in Christ. Now, bearing fruit. Bearing fruit is close to the same as abiding in Jesus, but it's not the same. Now, now let me explain. Right? Jesus tells us that if we were, if we abide in Him, 
um, if our hearts are fixed on him, we are filling our minds with his word and a heart, um, we will bear fruit. Fruit is, is also evident as considered a good and healthy part of our life. So Jesus is saying that um, fulfilling our minds and our hearts with Jesus and his word will be making not only our physical body health, healthy, but our temple and our um, spiritual body healthier for when we go to see Jesus in the future up in heaven. However, the fruit that Jesus is telling us about is not is, is not just physical fruit. It is spiritual fruit. He's talking about the, the fruits that are found in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. And they are the fruits of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. As we abide in Christ, we, are, we, nat we will naturally see these fruits come into play with our daily lives. As well, we will bear these fruits with abiding in Christ. That's why the two go hand in hand. Loving another water, another one another is another key pa um, message we can take away from this passage. Jesus takes his final moments throughout his time with his, with his disciples to tell them how they should love one another as he loved them. Jesus loved all of his disciples with all of his heart and set and and sets the table for us to love each other like. They were our only brother, as shown by Jesus, all right? Loving each other unconditionally, even when it's difficult to love. Jesus' lo Jesus's love is a good representation of how to love others. By loving another in a way, we are reflecting God's love and how Jesus showed it his time on earth. Remember, Jesus was just a physical figure of God, so him showing us that that way we should love others, set the table and the example for the future church and the future Christian belief, as well as the future Christianity, to take part and do so as well. Now, a uh, previous reflection. In my life, I have had a certain time where I was not, where I have not loved or liked anyone or to have enjoyed with another person. There is one point in my life when my brother and I had a huge fight over the stupidest thing ever, all right? We fought over a singular ball, a singular ball, all right? My brother had argued, saying he was much better at this certain sport than me, and when I clearly knew I was much better than him, knowing I was better because I had trained in it, and I knew I had better, like, because I was, I was the older brother of the two. He thought that he could throw the tennis ball farther and faster than me, all right? But to my knowledge, I knew I could do it. When he when he clearly had understood that he had lost, he went into a rage and a fit over all of it. He started to attack me, in which I tried to defend myself so I didn't get hurt because I had a game the next night. It was hard to try and love him for the rest of the day, considering he had gotten he had gotten both of us into some serious trouble. But in the end, we came around to our senses and we were brothers once again. Loving one another together in the end. Now, what are some challenges that a follower of Christ or a new Christian may experience? Well, several challenges may occur um, when a new follower or follower of Christ um, or just a follower in general may find challenging to do every day. One of the hardest ones that I found in the research was learn was to love learn to love one another like Jesus did, or love to, learn to love everyone. Uh, this is gonna be challenging for very new Christians, especially, and even believers in Jesus, because they might not understand the full meaning of loving uh, each each other unconditionally, even when it's hard to love someone else. But this was one commandment that Jesus gave before he left his, after his time on earth, an essential basically. <clears throat> these go, and along with loving one another daily challenges would occur too these are some of the challenges that it would include setting time aside to pray and read the bible each day finding a worship community where you can connect and remember and to be patient as well as to forgive others actions these are some of the things that might that new christians might find challenging relevance today all right John 15 is relevant for the rest of the eternity of the world, all right? It's relevant in the present, the past, and the future. It teaches you the figure of Christ and how 
to improve everyday living. It overall teaches the importance of abiding in Christ, bearing fruit, and loving one another. Even doing these things to people who you don't know or haven't worked with before. Setting the example to them will show them what Christ is like and entice them to investigate in our, in our religion. Jesus said this before he left. This is my command. Love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no, more, has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. John 15, 12, 13. Jesus is telling us to love one another as we have loved him so greatly, as he has loved us so greatly and sets the model for us to follow. Now, here's some impacts this could have today. If the whole world followed this, there would be several impacts, right? As we know the world today, there's a lot of fighting and a lot of violence. The main message, or the, the, the message shared with us earlier, shows how we can limit this. The ways of doing this of doing this are abiding in Jesus, bearing the fruit of God, and to love one another, just as we have stated above. Bearing fruit, peacefulness, joyfulness, happiness, etc., um, would lead to the world accomplishing almost everything. Alright? The world would be more loving. The world would be there to, to re reduce conflicts and violence, like wars and arguments, there'd be a lot less of them. Greater social justice and equality would increase. Peace and joy and greater hope for the future would also um, come into play and be much great, much more grateful. Of course, this would probably be a long shot because most of the, only about, not much of the world is, um, has a religion in the Bible or is aware of the Bible. Uh, in fact, almost about 50% of the world is aware of the Bible, so we got a long way to go. Um, but the whole world would also see more communities embracing each other, the families would go much stronger together, workplaces would be accepting and collaborative, and the world itself would just be a more equitable, equ equitable place.